Good afternoon, everyone. This is now my ninth trip to the region since October 7th. And President Biden asked me to come back on this trip with two main goals in mind. Uh, the first is to reaffirm the commitment of the United States to Israel's security. That's a commitment that we put into practice virtually every day since October 7th, including when Israel was attacked directly uh, by Iran back in April. Uh, in recent uh, weeks, given the heightened tensions, we have deployed additional assets to the region. Uh, the purpose of the deployment of these assets is not to provoke aggression, but rather to deter, uh, to make sure that it doesn't happen. Uh, but also to make clear that if it does, we are fully prepared to defend Israel. Uh, we've coupled this um, effort with an intense diplomatic campaign, virtually a global diplomatic campaign, working with countries around the world to send the message strongly to every concerned party not to take any steps that would escalate tensions, that would risk provoking a wider conflict. Uh, and this, too, has been something we've been working on from day one, since October 7th. It's been one of our primary objectives to prevent the conflict from escalating, from spreading to other places. And so this coupling of our military commitments, our security commitments, with an intense diplomatic campaign uh, is something that I'm pursuing on this trip, again, with uh, the intent of making sure that we deter further conflict, uh, but that we're also clearly prepared to defend against it if it comes. But what's most crucial now is that everyone, everyone refrain from taking any actions that could fuel further conflict, escalate tensions, uh, and uh, result in the spreading uh, of violence and, uh, and conflict. Second purpose was to further the intense efforts we're engaged in across our government to bring an agreement for a ceasefire in Gaza and the release of hostages across the finish line. Um, that is the single best way, obviously, to get hostages home, to get an enduring ceasefire that also reflects Israel's security interests, to relieve the terrible daily suffering of Gazans men, women, and children, desperate for food to eat, for shelter, and for staying out of harm's way. Uh, back in May, President Biden put uh, before the world a detailed uh, proposed agreement on a ceasefire and the release of hostages. And the entire world rallied behind it. Country after country came out in support of that agreement. The United Nations Security Council voted 14 to nothing in support of the agreement. and. The heart of it is incorporated into a UN Security Council resolution. Um, just last week, the President put forward a proposal with Qatar uh, and with Egypt to try to bridge the gaps that remain between the parties so that we could get agreement to what the President put out there a couple of months ago. Uh, in a very constructive meeting with uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu today, uh, he confirmed to me that Israel accepts the bridging proposal that he supports it. It's now incumbent on Hamas to do the same. And then the parties, with the help of the, the mediators, the United States, Egypt, and Qatar, uh, have to come together and complete the process of reaching clear understandings about how they'll implement the commitments that they've made under this agreement. But the next important step is for Hamas to say yes, and then in the coming days, for all of the expert negotiators to get together to work on uh, clear understandings on impl implementing the agreement. These are still complex issues, um, and they're going to require hard decisions by the leaders. Ultimately, it comes down to those decisions, uh, but there is, I think, a real sense of urgency here, uh, across the region, on the need to get this over the finish line and to do it as soon as possible. The United States is deeply committed to getting this job done, to getting it done now. Um, from here, I'm going on to uh, Egypt and Qatar. And these are our two critical partners in this effort to get the ceasefire agreement over the finish line, to get the hostages home, to put everyone on a better path to lasting peace and security. Uh, and so I look forward to consulting with President Sisi, uh, with um, uh, the Emir, 
uh, Sheikh Tamim, uh, with other uh, critical colleagues uh, in both countries, uh, on the immediate steps ahead, and in particular, uh, what needs to be done to ensure that Hamas comes along, uh, agrees to the, uh, the bridging proposal, and that everyone then works on finalizing uh, a clear understanding of their commitments to implement the agreement. That's where we are, and uh, again, I just say that for us, for President Biden, um, there's a deep sense of urgency in getting this done. And I also hear that uh, throughout this country as well as throughout the region. It's the single best way not only to get the hostages home, uh, to ease the suffering of people in Gaza, it's also the best way to make sure that conflict doesn't spread, that we don't see escalation, that we can actually diffuse some of the um, pressure points that we see uh, throughout the region, and then open prospects for trying to build a more enduring peace and security for everyone throughout the Middle East. Happy to take some questions. Hello, Mr. Secretary. Uh, just a few questions with the new information that you've just given us about Prime Minister Netanyahu accepting the bridging proposal. I just want to be very clear. Um, there has been a long-standing disagreement between Hamas and Israel about permanent ceasefire versus temporary ceasefire. Could you confirm if Prime Minister has accepted the permanent ceasefire, which was what Hamas wanted? Did the Prime Minister assure you that Israel is not going to add further demands to the current framework in the coming days? And are you more hopeful now after having this meeting with him? And one final thing, in your comments this morning, you said you refer to this latest round of talks, maybe the last opportunity for a deal. Why did you say that now? Does that mean if this one fails, the United States is going to give up on the ceasefire talks? Thank you. Yeah. Well, first, to take the last part of the question first, uh, no, we're never, we're never giving up. But what we know is this. With every passing day uh, that there's not an agreement, um, two things uh, can happen. One is, of course, uh, more hostages uh, can perish. Uh, and second, intervening events come along that may make things even more difficult, if, if not impossible. And we've, uh, we've experienced that throughout this process. So there's a, 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 the fierce urgency of now. That's what I think we're all feeling. And we do see this as the best opportunity to finally get this over the finish line. We'll never give up on it, but the, the challenge is the longer this goes on, uh, the more, uh, again, hostages will, will suffer and possibly perish, and the more other things happen that could make things impossible. So that's why we're so intensely focused on getting this done and getting it done now. Um, on the first part of the question, the, the bridging proposal that uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu has, has accepted, and we look to Hamas to accept, reflects what is in the um, ceasefire agreement that President Biden put before the world uh, back, uh, back in May that's incorporated into a UN Security Council resolution uh, and that makes clear that this process will proceed in phases. Uh, a first uh, initial uh, ceasefire over the course of six weeks in which uh, hostages are released, prisoners uh, are exchanged, and negotiations commence on um, the conditions necessary for an enduring ceasefire. That's what the, um, that's what the deal says. That's what's reflected in uh, what was put before the world and the world endorsed, the Security Council endorsed, and the, the bridging proposal was to try to close some gaps uh, or to clarify different parts of this agreement that needed clarification. Now, what the challenge, the challenge is, besides Hamas agreeing to the bridging proposal, is to make sure that there are clear understandings on um, how the uh, different parties are going to make good on their commitments, how they're actually going to implement uh, this agreement. And that's what uh, is so necessary. And is, uh, I don't want to at all minimize the challenge. These are complex issues, but that's also why we have expert negotiators uh, who are working on this. Uh, I should have mentioned as well, Prime Minister Netanyahu uh, committed to sending his uh, senior expert team uh, back to uh, either Doha or to, uh, uh, to Egypt uh, to, to try to complete this process. Uh, but we look to Hamas, first and foremost, to get behind the uh, bridging proposal and then uh, to join everyone in uh, trying to get a clear understanding on how the uh, commitments will be implemented. General Tom. Thank you. 
Uh, Secretary Blinken, thank you. Um, let's talk about Hamas. You've just mentioned them. So you've put uh, the final proposal in Doha on Friday. Israel has accepted this. Hamas has declined. Is there a real way uh, to move forward? What is your message to Hamas? And if I may ask you, Prime Minister Netanyahu has said he is insist on an Israeli presence on the Philadelphia corridor. Is it an obstacle to reach an agreement? And what have you told him when you have, uh, both of you met earlier today? Thank you. So what I would say to uh, Hamas and to its leadership is, if it genuinely cares about the Palestinian people that it purports to somehow represent, uh, then it will say yes to this uh, agreement, and it will work on uh, clear understandings about how to implement it. Uh, because the single quickest, best, most effective way to relieve the terrible suffering of the Palestinians that was instigated by Hamas's attack on October 7th and, and the war that, that ensued is to complete this agreement. Um, so that's really the question. Uh, is Hamas, is its leadership actually looking out for Palestinian children, women and men who are suffering at this very moment uh, in Gaza? And if it is, it will agree. And, uh, and then we'll work on making sure that there's clarity on all sides about how the agreement will be implemented, how they're going to make good on their commitments. Uh, because not everything is spelled out in detail in the, in the agreement. Uh, and I can't comment on specific, uh, specific issues that, uh, that remain, uh, but as I said, there are questions of implementation and making sure that it's clearly understood what each side will do to carry out uh, its commitments. That's the next step, assuming Hamas agrees to the bridging proposal. Jenny, go ahead. Thanks, Mr. Secretary. Following up on my colleague's question, yes or no, have you gotten any indications from Hamas since the talks wrapped last week that they recognize the urgency of the deal on the table and that this could be the last chance? And in your meeting with Prime Minister Netanyahu, did you raise the escalating settler violence that we're seeing in the West Bank? The EU has suggested they would be open to sanctioning sitting Israeli officials. Is the U.S. open to doing the same? And then if I may, I'd be remiss not to talk about the humanitarian situation on the ground in Gaza. I know you say ceasefire is the best way to bring that to an end, but in the time that these the war and the negotiations have been going on. Officials in the Gaza Strip say 40,000 people have died. Polio has now reemerged. It's been gone for over two decades. What is the U.S. prepared to do to ensure that the humanitarian situation is alleviated in the time that the negotiations are still going on? So uh, let me let me take the last part uh, first uh, because I spent some time today on uh, as I always do. Uh, on the humanitarian situation, both specifically, for example, about uh, polio, because we uh, very much share the concern about the possibility of its uh, reemergence, and we've been working on a detailed plan to make sure that um, those who need to be vaccinated against it can get vaccinated, and we're working with the Israeli government on that, and uh, I believe that uh, we'll be able to move forward with a plan to do that uh, in the coming weeks. It is urgent. It is vital. More broadly, there are... Um, very, very uh, uh, important issues that continue to need, uh, to need to be resolved in order for people to get the assistance they desperately need, whether it's, uh, uh, whether it's food, whether it's medicine, uh, whether it's appropriate shelter, uh, whether it's uh, dealing with things like um, treating the sewage that's accumulated uh, throughout Gaza and that promotes an acute, uh, that, that presents an acute health hazard, that's an incubator for, for disease. All of that was very much on my uh, agenda today. I had a detailed discussion with the defense minister, with the uh, uh, head of the military, on uh, steps that need to be taken, must be taken, to uh, continue to try to improve the situation for Palestinians in Gaza. Now, again, the, the, the quickest way to do that uh, in, um, in the most robust way possible would be through the ceasefire, because that opens up uh, much more space to surge assistance into people and then to build something that's genuinely sustainable. But even in the absence of a ceasefire, this uh, is uh, an absolute imperative. Um, in terms of uh, what we've heard from Hamas, um, so obviously we don't hear directly from, uh, from Hamas, but both Egypt and Qatar are in contact with, with Hamas. And um, look, I don't want to uh, go beyond anything we've, we've already said except to say that tomorrow, uh, when I see the leaders of both Egypt and Qatar, um, I'll get the latest from them on what they uh, what they are hearing, and uh, I can't um, you know speculate on exactly what Hamas's intentions are. We've seen 
public statements, but we've seen uh, public statements before uh, where uh, that don't fully reflect uh, where the uh, where Hamas is. Um, as I said, the critical uh, next step is for Hamas to accept the bridging proposal that Israel, that uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu has now accepted, and then uh, to engage with um, everyone else on making sure that uh, we have clear understandings of how each party would actually implement the commitments that it's undertaken uh, in this agreement. So probably more tomorrow after um, we, uh, we talk to our friends in, in Egypt and Qatar. And I'm sorry, there was a third um, part. The settler violence, did this oh. come up in your meeting and are you prepared uh, yes, it to did. sanction uh, sitting officials? It did, and um, uh, this has been also something that's been uh, a deep and ongoing concern uh, for us. Uh, violence, intimidation uh, as well of uh, the Palestinian community in the West Bank. Uh, there was an incident, as you know, just a few days ago that I think has galvanized uh, attention from the, from the Israeli government uh, and that that is critical. Uh, and we look to see um, action taken, action taken to prevent uh, this kind of violence, uh, action taken to hold people who are responsible for it accountable. Um, and um, we're looking to the government to take the necessary steps to stop the violence and to make sure that there is real deterrence in place so that it doesn't happen again. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you.